Mm. Greetings, everyone. Breath family, conscious breathers, all life, welcome. Angels, angles of life, or angels of light. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to dive into some religious text, if you will. Blessings from Cape Town. Greetings. Uh, we're going to tap into... Um, yeah, let's start with the angels, and then we'll go into... Um, discipline and routine. We'll tap into a little bit of that, a little into that topic. But yeah, let's start with the angels. Now, a lot of people uh, depict angel as human form with wings, stuff of that nature. And it's very funny whenever you hear um <laughs> Whenever you see certain religions uh, like to shame even meditation and stuff like that, right? And I'm sure some of you have seen it. I've, I've received it. <laughs> I'll be honest with that. And it's funny. They like to say, new age this, new age that, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if you're wearing clothes, you're, you're technically new age because... That's, it's not normal. Why, why are you putting clothes on, on, on a God? On, on God? On God's <laughs> children and God, on God's beings, if you will. You know? It's not natural to be having clothes on uh, in general. So, yeah, I'll save this live. No worries. Okay. So, let's tap in. When we think of angels, the images conjured are often quite similar. Radiant, winged figures with many human traits. We see this imagery in modern depictions as well as in classical art. So one would assume this is how they are described in biblical and ancient texts. But this is far from the truth. Uh -huh. Angels take more of a spiritual form as opposed to a physical one. There is no real description of what an angel's true form is, yep. but there are some descriptions of the bodies they assume. Mm -hmm. And be warned, they are very strange. So let's take a look at some of the different types of angels. In the 12th century, scholars divided all of the angels around God into categories based on a hierarchical system. In Christianity, this is sometimes referred to as the three spheres and the nine orders of angels orders. because it describes a three-tier system with three types of angels in each tier. Let's go through Near that. the bottom of this hierarchy are the cherubim. Mm -hmm. The book of Ezekiel describes them as having four faces, each one representing something different. The lion represented wild animals. The ox domesticated animals, the eagle, birds, and the human represented humanity. The cherubim had long straight legs with hooves and two pairs of wings. You may also see them with regular feet and four pairs of wings. A much different appearance to the young plump cherubs we would associate with figures such as Cupid, that stem from Christian scholars such as Thomas Aquinas, who characterize them as having a burning love for God. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew Bible mentions the word cherubim almost 100 times, That's but their purpose is still is. fairly ambiguous. The general belief is that they exist to guard the Garden of Eden, especially the Tree of Life. The cherubim having numerous faces has this almost chimera feel, but the human face is more akin to a sphinx. Either way, there is something very unsettling about their appearance. The seraphim are a type of angel that appear in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, but their importance varies. In Judaism, they are middle of the road, 
But in Christianity, they assume the highest rank possible just under God. The book of Isaiah describes them as having six wings. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. From this passage we gather that two of these six wings were used to cover their faces, two to cover their feet, and the last two were used to fly. The second passage describes them almost as cheerleaders who fly around the throne of God spreading his word. This description is not as detailed as the cherubim, so all we know for sure is that the seraphim were made up of mostly wings. Mm -hmm. The book of Revelation only differs slightly, describing their six wings as being full of eyes. In Islam we see the term seraph, which is used to describe archangels who were born from celestial fire. Next we have the thrones or the ophanim. These are about as far from a traditional looking angel as one can get. In Christianity, the Ophanim were the entities that acted as chariots or transportation for the cherubim. That's familiar. They were giant interlocking wheels with wings and eyes that would reside in the part of the cosmos where material form began to shape. Mm. Like the seraphim, they would also chant God's glory whenever in his presence. The Book of Enoch describes them as the many eyed ones and places them in the same category of celestial being as the cherubim and seraphim. Their role here was much more than transportation. The Ophanim never sleep, and forever guard the throne of God. When Ezekiel has his vision of the great chariot, he describes all three of these angels as the guardians. But given the strange nature of what he's describing, some believe this was a hallucination. Others take Ezekiel's account as an encounter with UFOs, so no one really knows where they came from and why they look so strange. That's familiar. The Virtues are a group of angels who do not possess a physical body, nope. but have control over the elements. Right. They were referred to as the Shining Ones because they appear as sparks of light. Burning bush. The main role of the virtues was to perform miracles for those who were deemed as deserving. They would receive orders from the angels above them and travel to earth to perform these miracles. Once on earth, they would assume a human form. There are several types of angels along with the virtues whose primary form resembles a source of light. Angels are celestial beings. They are neither male nor female, and essentially they can take whatever form they desire. Yep. Is it a surprise that the angels who spend all of their time in the cosmos with God are the strangest and most unorthodox looking? <laughs> no, not really. If you're talking about regions that are supposed to be outside of our comprehension, then surely the beings that inhabit them would also look out of place. Mm -hmm. Even if that means they resemble something you'd expect to see in a Lovecraftian horror, or perhaps the writings of someone coming down off an acid trip. <laughs> it also makes sense for the archangels and regular angels to appear in a more human light, as they have the most human interaction. The further back you delve into various religious texts, the stranger angels appear to be. As later books were added and revised, the more human-looking angels became the norm. Yeah. And maybe this was done to make things easier to understand. In reality, we may never know. But it's still interesting to examine. Or controlling the narrative. In that sense. So that eye that you saw, what does that look like? What does that remind you of? The eye of providence. Aha. Aha. The eye of providence. The eye of providence. Now, now is it clicking? Clicking together? 
Now, now it's making making sense of why the Eye of Providence is technically a Christian. The Eye of Providence is a Christian symbol, or so they say. And now you're now you're connecting the dots here. Look at that one more time. Just one eye, not multiple eyes, one eye. One can even relate it all the way back to um, the eye of Horus as well, in, in that sense. So what do you guys what do you guys think? Angels are not what you think they are. I'm gonna play I'm gonna play it one more time. muffled sorry about that guys <laughs> well, at least some people saw the first i might let me see if i can play it one more time because i did touch the volume so maybe that has something to do with it i try not to touch it at all when the video plays but um yeah going back to that if, if most christians knew about what angels truly look like <laughs> uh i think um more of them would have compassion in this sense and stop attacking certain... I don't, and I'm not just depicting one religion here. Like, multiple different religions will call people, hey, new age this, you're this, you're that. Um, I think it's very important that you see all different angles as much as possible and know your culture. Depending if you're truly one, if you really want to represent something, know your culture. Now, that is what the angels really look like, and they have. And when you look at certain Egyptian texts, so to speak, going even back to the Eye of Horus, there it is. There's a connection there, if you didn't see it. So let me see if I can play it one more time. Hopefully the sound isn't muffled. Let's see. I think that's better. Let me know, guys. Oh, it's muffled. Apologies about that. Mm. Let's see. <laughs> Apologies about that, but uh, at least if you were to rewatch this video and go in the beginning, I played it. Let's see here. I dreamed with an angel last night. No audio, so reboot. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. I did hear it before, though. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, you guys can replay the video. I'm going to save this live for everybody. I'm actually going to end it now and then make another live, and we dive into discipline versus routine. I think that's a great topic to tap into. So I'm going to exit this video. If you found any value in this, please share. Peace.